Hey there, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about the latest updates to my industrial development model. Now this model was originally released in late 2019. So here we are sitting early 2022. It's been out quite a few years. And over those years, it's undergone a whole host of updates. And I haven't updated a video since that time. Now, if you're familiar with how Adventures in CRE models work, we release the model in called a, a minimum viable product stage, what we call an MVP. Uh, where it can do certain things, but may contain bugs and often lack some of the features that many of the users want. So then in the subsequent months that follow that release, we get emails, comments uh, that come in based on that uh, or for that model. And based on those comments, we then fix bugs and we add features. And so if you go to, again, the inversions tab really of any of our models, you'll come here and you can see the change log of the various changes that have happened over time. Now, this was originally released, like I said, late 2019. Since that time, these are all the changes that have happened to the model. And I'm going to talk through just a few of the key features that now exist in the model that didn't in the original video, walkthrough video for this model. So to, to do that, let's start, first start on the summary tab. So one of the first features that we added was the annual cash flow report. And you can access that at any time just by coming to the summary tab, scrolling down and clicking this show button. And when you click the show, what it does is it, it unhides a tab called annual cash flow. And this is just a printable report um, that, again, ready to print, that uh, shows the annual development cash flows, annual operating cash flows, and your annual property level cash flows for for you know, your particular investment. Now the model itself uh, underwrites all of the cash flows on a monthly basis. So if you want, you can scroll down, click this little plus button, open it up. And here you'll find the monthly cash flows that are then combined to make annual cash flows. Again, just a simple report that you can print and show. That again is on the summary tab. You can click the hide to remove that tab. There's also been a few miscellaneous updates, some new line items, um, updates to graphs and so forth on the summary tab. But largely the summary tab is the same as when we originally released this model. Now, the main changes are going to be on the underwriting tab. And uh, let me point out just the big ones. So first, you now have an additional method for forecasting your investment period or your development period cash flows. Uh, if you go under method and you click this drop down menu, you'll now find a steady growth and a steady decline option. So let's come say to our construction cost line item. Currently it's modeled as an S curve, but we can go say steady growth. And when it's steady growth, what that means is it starts out small and then it grows over time. And the max amount is in the very last period for that line item. Steady decline is the exact opposite. It starts big, as we can see here, its largest cash flow is in the very first period of your projection. And then as we scroll out to the right, the smallest cash flow is the last. And again, the number of periods for each line item are determined here under the start and the end input. So that's the, the first big change that, that we made. Um, another big change is we added an additional tranche of debt. So this model originally allowed for just construction debt, and then you had equity was your other source of capital. Now you can have either construction debt and, well, you can include construction debt, but also add, if you'd like, a mezzanine debt or a secondary loan such as mezzanine. So to, to use this, what we'll do is first, uh, you'll set your loan to cost for all of your debt. So let's say that we have our combined debt is 80% loan to cost and your cost being your total uses. Uh, then that 80% will be split out between up to two tranches of debt. So you can have all of it being just construction debt. You just enter 80% under construction loan and your mezzanine will, will be zero or your secondary debt, whatever you call this. Uh, you might even use preferred equity and, and preferred equity often from a modeling standpoint is actually just structured as a mezzanine piece or secondary debt. 
But here, let's say that we're going to do a 65% construction loan, and then we're going to go out and borrow an additional 15% in MES. Uh, we can also choose how that debt is funded. Is it is it funded first construction debt and then MES debt, or um, would it be... So this is now under funding order. We can choose this to one, and now con the construction debt and the MES debt would fund Perry Pursue or at the same time in proportion to their percentages of total debt. Uh, now, the model still assumes that equity goes out first, debt goes out second, but you now have that option to choose how your first time you have the option to have multiple tranches of debt, and then you can choose how those tranches of debt are funded. I'm going to assume here my MES is funded second. So first, we'll fund the construction debt. And once the construction debt is fully funded, we'll uh, fund the MES. Um, now you may ask, well, what, what if I want my construction debt actually to fund second and my MES to fund first? Well, that's pretty simple. You just simply reverse the titles here. Let's call this MES. Let's call this construction. Let's do 15% of MES. That would be 65% construction. And then you set the construction debt to two. Um, and now the funding order would be equity first, followed by your MES, followed by your construction debt. So then we also have the option for variable and fixed rate interest rates. Um, if I click fixed, you just simply set your rate for each of these pieces. So let's say our MES is eight, our construction is five. And uh, now it's a fixed interest rate across the entire hold period. Uh, you have the option, though, to choose variable. So variable, let's say you have LIBOR plus 300 basis points or um, SOFR plus 250 basis points or treasury rate plus 175 basis points. Whatever that may be, you can choose variable. And then out here to the right, by default, you have then the, the annual rate by period. And you'll have to manually then model this. And so you just update these values out here to the right to reflect what you think the forward rate curve would look like for each of your tranches of debt. By default, it simply brings over what you had entered for fixed rate. Um, and so that's the variable versus fixed rate debt option. Uh, next, we have uh, the next big feature, and this was a big one, is we included now a permanent debt module. So the permanent debt module in this model originally was purely a merchant build model, meaning it was meant to analyze the development lease up and then subsequent sale of the asset. And so when I have just the merchant, the, the, there's no permanent debt included here. We assume a sale in month 43. And at that month 43, the construction debt and any secondary debt is paid off and we exit the investment. But what if at stabilization, instead of selling, we want to refinance? And that's where we have now this permanent debt module. So by default, it's set to off. And this note here says permanent debt not in use. And there's two buttons here. One is no perm debt. The other is perm debt. And when no perm debt's on, this button is blue. Well, we can click the perm debt. And then clicking that, it opens up a permanent debt module. And this module now adds a variety of rows to the model. Uh, so, for instance, you'll now find in the operating cash flow section a permanent debt service line. Uh, you'll find a now a cash flow after financing line. You're going to find um, the loan payoff in your reversion calculation. We'll use the permanent debt loan payoff amount when the permanent debt module is on. Uh, you'll find on the summary tab the same. The calculation of equity proceeds from sale include that now that permanent loan pay off. And then down here under our returns, uh, the roll up of our cash flows to calculate unlevered and levered returns, you're going to find a permanent loan funding line, a permanent loan debt service line, and our permanent loan payoff line. Now let's talk about how you use this module. Let me come back up here, find it. Here's our permanent debt module. So again, I turn it on by clicking that perm debt button. And now in here, by default, the loan funding month will equal uh, the stabilization month. So the idea is the first month of stabilization is when you're going to put on permanent debt. You could change that, though. You could say, all right, I'm going to go out. Uh, and your, your stabilization is calculated here at the very top of your operating period cash flow section, first stabilized month. I'm going to go 12 months beyond that first month. So that's when my 
permanent debt will fund. Automatically, the payoff for the construction debt will be equal to the funding month of your permanent debt. Uh, we then have to set an interest rate. So let's say 375. We can choose whether it's interest only or not. Let's say no. And let's use a 30 year amortization. We then enter a loan amount for our permanent debt. So by default, this loan amount is set to an amount that is actually exactly equal to the payoff needed to, or to the amount needed to pay off the construction debt. But let's imagine that it's actually tied to, um, say, a loan to value. So I'm going to come down here to my stabilized value, 41 and a half, and let's go 60% of that. So that's 24.95 million. Now, unfortunately, in this particular case, this is one scenario that isn't sufficient to pay off our construction debt, which is 25. So let's go to 65% debt. Okay, now we have more than sufficient proceeds. In fact, there will be uh, called a million in excess proceeds that will be you that will go to pay down equity that will be that will return to equity. Uh, we also have some loan fees plus closing cost assumption. So let's assume, uh, I don't know, one and a quarter percent will go towards loan fees and closing costs. Uh, and then the rest are um, some, say our loan payoff assumption, uh, our debt service coverage. I did notice that there's a, a minor error here, so I'll fix this. And so likely the version you will see will include a fix here. But um, uh, in essence, this will tell you the debt service coverage ratio at this loan amount uh, in month 44. This is the payoff at month 120 of this particular loan since it's amortizing on a 30 year schedule. You'll note if I go to interest only, the payoff now is equal to the loan amount. And so that is now version 2.1 of the industrial development model and, and the new, the major features that we've added to the model since its original release. If you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, thanks for your time.